But uh, we're talking about, uh, last Sunday we spoke about Faith Bites. How many of you remember Faith Bites? We had chili bites in the house as well. Some of you had some chili bites. Some of you had some not so spicy bites. But we spoke about the aspects of faith that helps you to grow. How many of you know we need to grow? Faith is not stagnant. Faith is action. uh, God's always advancing us in faith. God's always testing us in faith. Faith is not faith without tests. How many of you know that? Faith is not faith without tests. Anything that needs to be genuine is tested and in faith is the same way. If God wants to see if your faith is genuine, he's going to test it. The book of James says this to us. Count it all joy when all kinds of trials and tribulations come. Yippee! When they're on their way, you must get happy. You must get not happy because of the tribulation. You're getting happy that your faith is getting stronger. That is where the end result is, that the faith is getting stronger. For the guys that go to gym, you can't just look at the equipment. You've actually got to use the equipment. Amen? You get some guys in the gym that walk around, you know, and look like they're doing something. Checking everybody else, you know, drinking water every now and then. Checking in the mirror, to see you know, you can't be doing that. You can't go to gym and watch your children gym, you know. <laughs> it's like me the other day. I went with the family to the gym. I decided I don't feel like gym today, but I'm going to swipe my card so that I can get the points at least, yeah. So going to the gym and Logan wants to swim. So I watch, I sit on the bench while Logan swims and the, and the rest of them are gymming upstairs. <laughs> you can't do that. You've got to participate. You've got to get in there. You've got to use the equipment. There's got to be resistance for there to be growth. Amen. So if you're in, you're in a place of resistance right now and there's things happening in your life and you're feeling like the devil's against you, because he is, the fact is the devil's always going to be against you. The fact is that he's doing his job. How many of you know this? The devil's job is to test. The devil's job is to come in and to prick and to look if he can get you into a place where you can submit to temptation. Amen. We can say yes, but you close the door on him. You shut the door on him in the name of Jesus. You stand in the power of God. You stand under the authority of God and you command the devil. It is written. Amen. And so you can stand in the word of God. What God is training you in is in the word of God. What God is making you strong in is to see if you believe what the word says. Do you stand upon the word? When the test comes, what comes out of your mouth? Whoa, Pastor, you don't want to know what comes out of my mouth when the test comes. Some very choice words sometimes come out of my mouth. Amen. What comes in your what comes into your mind when the test comes? What happens when that test comes? What's the first thing that pops into your mind? Where's the fridge? <laughs> what comes into your mind? Where's the bottle? Where's the internet? Where's Google when you need Google? Amen. Where's a friend? What is the first thing? What's your first response when you come to a test? What is the stuff that happens in your life? Where do you run to? Where do you find advice? Do you surround yourself with people that have got a heart after God? Or do you surround yourself with people that have no clue? That are really not interested in it? That will give you what you need to hear? How many of you know a good friend will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear? A good friend will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. How many of you got offended with your friends before? Offended with your family before when they speak the truth? But you know it's the truth, but you get offended anyway. I mean, because it hits hard. It offends your heart. It offends the flesh to see what's in that heart of yours. Amen. And the Word of God is like this. So this morning we're going to be talking about this narrow gate. You can go to the next slide. We're going to talk about the narrow gate, and there's a narrow gate. For you to fit through there, you've got to be in shape, man. For ask Pam. If you're not in shape, come Pam. Pam does some exercises. Pam is here at the church many times in the week, and she's also with, uh, what's it, the Herbalife. So you can get into shape. How many of you have tried to get into shape before? Is it hard work? Ay, 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 ay. You've got to get up a little bit earlier. Sometimes you've got to go to bed a bit later. Sometimes you've got to cut a bit of time here. When you're really tired, you don't feel like doing it, but you've got to keep on persisting. You've got to get into shape. There's different shapes. Amen? I'm in shape. Round is also a shape. I'm not round. I'm like a pole is also a shape. Eh? Thin. I used to joke with the guys at school. When you've got Wednesday legs. Have you heard about Wednesday legs before? When's they going to break? Amen? <laughs> The guys with the thin legs, that were, but some of the guys in the rugby had the thin legs were the fast guys, you know. Don't underestimate, underestimate those Wednesday legs, they can run. Amen. And you get the people that are lack around, more luck to the props in the front. Os de rant, eh? They're in the front. We've got those guys in the front there. And they're the guys in, they're also in shape. They're in a round shape. Amen. 
And so you can just comfort yourself this morning. Whatever shape you're in, God's going to help you. God's going to give you the strength and God's going to continue to guide you. Amen. So get going with it. So there's your plan. Write this down somewhere. And there's the plan. There's something that God spoke to me before I prepared the sermon. When I sat down, I started writing this down. There's your plan and there's the plan. There's your way and there's the way. There's your purpose and there's the purpose. There's your will and there's His will. There's my truth. Let's just stop there for a second. And there's the truth. Amen. Because many people say, but this is my truth. When you share the gospel with someone, they say, okay, Jesus works for you. That's your truth. But my truth is that so-and-so works for me. This works for me. This meditation techniques works for me. This stuff works for me. This mind over matter. This this, uh, uh, this medis- medication, whatever it is, this is my truth, that might be your truth. But the truth is, there is only one truth. There's only Jesus, that's the truth, amen. And that's where we come sometimes. My truth can be relevant to what I want. My truth will be bent towards what I want in my life. What I see is truth. But the Bible speaks completely against that. It speaks against that there is a truth. It is only the truth, and Jesus calls himself the truth. Amen? And so when you find Jesus, you find the truth. When people seek for truth, and I'm not saying people can't be seeking. I'm not saying that people are not always in a right place or in a right place. But this morning I'm saying to you that when people begin to seek for the truth, they will find Jesus. Even though it doesn't matter where they're seeking, they might begin to seek, but God will begin to see that they're seeking for the truth. And when they find the truth, they will find Jesus. Amen? And it says there's a way... But there's only one way. There's a way, but there's only one way, and his name is Jesus. I'm going to put this aside. So let's go to the main scripture for today, the narrow gate, Matthew chapter 7. Listen to this. It says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, And difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Sure. Now, we're not here to scare you this morning. We're here to encourage you. And so this morning when I look at the scripture, I get a little bit scared. I get a little bit anxious. I get a little bit like, Lord, what is this saying to me? It talks to us about two ways. It talks to us about two paths. Now, how many of you like riding on the highway? Oh, it's lovely. You can put your foot down a little bit if you were in Germany in the Autobahn. You can drive as fast as you want. You know there's no speed limit there. But no potholes either. <laughs> Amen. So you can drive as fast as you want to there on the Autobahn in Germany. Now we, we might be on the Autobahn going as fast as we want to. It's lacquer to put your foot down. There's no rules. There's no regulation. There's no restriction. There's nothing that holds me back. I can do what I want to. But listen to what this scripture says to us. It compares the narrow gate, the narrow way to the broad way and the wide, wide gate. Amen? And so this morning we're going to look at the road to destruction first, the first one that it says. It says, enter through the narrow gate. How many of you know the song Highway to Hell? That's what we've got in the background there. There's devil singing, Highway to Hell. <laughs> eh? That guy sounds like he's struggling a bit. Highway to hell. Okay. Now the song is in everybody's head. <laughs> so hopefully not on that highway. But listen to what it says here. It says there's a wide gate that this road starts with, and there's a broad way that it goes on, and there's many go in by it, and it leads to destruction. You see, everything that you start or everything that you subscribe to, everything that you follow will lead somewhere. Now this is true for social media even. Who do you follow on your socials? Who do you follow after will lead you in a certain direction of thinking? Listen, the mind is a wonderful thing, but the mind is also a battlefield. The mind is also where, the, where God begins to infiltrate your thoughts through His Word or through His Spirit, and where the devil comes in through the world and the way that the world thinks. And you can be shaped in your mind, and what happens in your mind will begin to filtrate into your mouth, filtrate through into your actions. The mind is so powerful, it will shape the way that you go. Amen? That's why the Bible 
teaches us about the mind over and over. It speaks about strongholds. It says our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Everything that sets it up, self up against the knowledge of God. Amen. And so knowledge in your mind is so powerful, it depends on where you find the source of knowledge from. If you hang out with the wrong people, you begin to speak like them. Have you noticed some people that spend a lot of time together? I'm sure you guys use similar terms, similar phrases. Amen. If your best friend uses similar phrases, your wife in the house, in families, you use similar phrases all the time because you spend a lot of time with those people. Bad company corrupts good character. Amen. And so when you mix with the wrong people, you begin to speak like that. I remember when I was in hostel, high school. Now, people used to use some choice words in hostel. The F-bomb, the D-bomb, the P-bomb. Every bomb that you could find was in the hostel. And eventually, Julius was also F-bombing with them. He was throwing out big ones there, big ones. But on the other side, I was in church every Sunday. Eish, in this church. Hmm? <laughs> sitting there, round about where Pastor Keith and them were sitting. Hot seats there. Sitting next to mommy and daddy worshiping the Lord. Monday, I'm F-bombing at the hostel. Sunday, I'm in church again. Saturday, I'm in the club again. Mm. Come on. Yeah, a club. Disco, disco. Eh? For some people who go a little bit further back. <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> eh? What you, Sally? What's wrong? The song. Ay, ay, ay. Road to destruction, it's a wide gate. It means it's easy to go through. That means that many people, it means a dead flow go with the fish. A fish, dead fish go with the flow. Amen? It means that if you're a dead fish, you go with the flow. Wherever the world's going, you're just going that way. It's easy to go because everybody's on that route. Everybody listens to that song. You know, everybody follows that person on social. You know that everybody's doing this. Everybody's looking at this. Everybody's praising that thing. Everybody's thinking like that. Will you be the person that goes with the flow? Because that's the wide gate that everybody's going through. It says that many go in by it. Many people. And this is the part that gets interesting, that many people, it's not majority rules. Amen? It's not majority rules. Here with God's kingdom, it is the truth that rules. It's God that rules. It's the word of God. It's the truth of Christ. And when many go into a direction, will you be the one that stands up against the flow? Because let me tell you, when a, when a river's flowing a certain direction and you get into it, it's very difficult to stop that flow. Once you're into it, so get out of it. Separate yourself. The Bible says, be separate from them. Amen? Isolate yourself from the world. Not in not living in the world, but in your thinking and in your actions, you need to stand out like a sore thumb. You need to be that person that says, when everybody else says, this is the way the world's going, you're saying, we're going this way. We're not going to comply to this. We're not going to go down with these thoughts. Many go in by it, but it leads to a place of distraction. It is a highway to hell. Amen. How many of you know there's only two places you can end up? Anybody want to tell me? Heaven or? Heaven or? Oh, we don't like that word. Some people can't even say the word. I see some of you go like. You go with conviction. Heaven! There you go. Some of your faces like that. You see, the thing is, at the end of the day, hell was not made for people to go to. How many of you know this? I don't believe that God wants people to go to hell. God's first choice is for people to go to heaven. God's first choice is to get people saved. That's why the Christian church must be busy in spreading the gospel, loving people, encouraging people, strengthening people in their faith, coming to, alongside of them and saying, let's walk this road with Christ. Let's see what the Bible says. Where can we help? Where can we support? Where can we teach? Where can we bring the truth in? That's the work of the church. We need to help people to show them that God doesn't want you to go to hell, but there is a place called hell, and if we reject Christ, that's where we end up. There's a destructive road. Many people are on this highway. You need to put a blockade up on their highway and say, whoa, whoa, there's a better way than this highway. I'll show you the crunkle pipe here on the side, the shortcut here, but there is this place that's difficult because you're going to have to go one by one. Let's get to this road. This road that is difficult. Let's get to this road that's easy. Let's get to this road that is wide. Proverbs 14 verse 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end 
is the way of death. Okay? What seems right to us is not right. But there is a road that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. I think that's what happens today. You see what happens with us is we bring God down to our level instead of going up to God's level. Let me say that again. The human race as we stand now, the most evil things that are happening upon the earth right now, things that are spoken of as good that is evil and evil as good. Amen? That's what's happening in the world right now. When people say things like it's my body, my choice, I understand what they mean by that. But what I don't understand is that you can say that there is no murder when someone murders a baby through abortion. Now, I'm not saying there's no forgiveness for someone that has has had an abortion. Or there is no way back to God. There is always a way back. And the way is Jesus. And the way is repentance. And the way is confession. And the way is through the love of Christ. Because it's the kindness of God that draws people. Now we are not here to condemn people that are standing in a place of hurt. A place of being lost. A place of not being with Christ. We are here to encourage people to show them. Even though the world is preaching this. And the world is pushing an agenda. There is a better way. There's a way out of your destruction. There's a way out of your loneliness. There's a way out of your depression. There's a way out of your sickness. And His name is Jesus. Amen. And that's what we are called to do. So this message is not about condemning people. This message is to get people into shape so that they qualify to go onto the narrow road. 